was on a Sabbath evening, in drear November days, two friends were heard creating in Perry Bar's byways. High words just fed the anger, the young man's life is fled. A shot, and then another, and Thomas Ball was dead. Tenth of November, 1923, Aston Villa travelled to Nottingham, where they beat Notts County by a goal to nil. Thomas Edgar Ball, along with his Villa side, was on the up and up. After staking his claim as a starting centre half, a call up to the English national team beckoned. That call up would never arrive, and the win over Notts County would be Ball's final appearance in a Villa shirt. Eleventh of November, 1923, Thomas Edgar Ball was murdered in cold blood by his landlord, the former soldier and ex-policeman George Stagg in Perry Bar. To this day, he remains the only professional English Football League player to have been murdered. Tommy Ball came from uh, Durham, County Durham, Chesterley Street. He was born at the end of the 19th century, joined Newcastle United, and he played for them, and then joined Villa uh, early in 1920. He was very, very highly rated. Uh, people were talking about him as a potential uh, England international. Um, uh, from the, the, the piece I've, I've read about him, he was even described that, that potentially because of his looks. Uh, I think his mother had been of Italian descent, so he'd got sort of slicked dark hair and he was regarded as the David Beckham of his day, if you like, although they wouldn't have known that at the time. <laughs> we only know about Tommy Ball from, from what we've read, but it's just, it is, it is a, a strange situation for him to be, to be shot dead by his next door neighbour, who's a police officer, is just... It's just remarkable, really. When you think about footballs of today, th this would not exist. This, this, this is just incredible, really. Uh, he lived in a rented accommodation in Perry Bar, just him and his wife. Uh, and next in the adjoining house was his landlord, George Stagg, who actually committed the murder. After he got back from that, that game, he wasn't going to envisage that he was going to have a, have a row over, over something as ridiculous as, as his chickens and, and his dog barking with, with the next door neighbour. And he and his wife went for a drink and apparently he drank three halves of mild ale uh, and then they caught the bus home, just like Beckham would. Tommy decided to take the, the dog for a walk. Now what happened after that is all a matter of conjecture. Some row ensued and uh, it ended up with, with George Stagg going out to him with the shotgun and the thing going off. George Stagg argued later it was an accident. The reason I think the jury wouldn't have believed that, that the accident story is that uh, Beatrice, in a panic, went rushing off to try and find some help. And she claimed that uh, as she was running, another shot sort of whistled past her head. So, you know, we could have had a double murder. Perhaps there's more to the story when it comes to the reasons behind Stagg's actions. Surely a dispute over animals can't be the sole reason to shoot a man in cold blood. Whether there's any jealousy there, I mean, I'm not sure that kind of having a garden full of chickens is the, is the kind of, um, you know, the old school equivalent to, to parking his kind of flash, his flash Mercedes next door. This kind of situation has probably played out a hundred, a thousand times, a million times through history, neighbour disputes, somebody getting fed up, you know, it, it, it escalated. But again, it's the fact that it's in football and anything that happens in football, even back then, suddenly becomes kind of mainstream news. He had served them notice uh, to evict them, but that had been about three months earlier. So what happened between that threat and what happened that night, obviously things had sort of just gone, gone on indefinitely for a, for a while anyway and then it all came to a head that particular night but they clearly they weren't not they weren't getting on 
Tommy Ball was killed on the 11th of November, 95 years ago. This day, as it has done every year since the end of the Great War, marks Armistice Day. George Stagg fought in that war and came home injured. He no longer had authority or power. Did that, alongside everything else, push him over the edge? He was, strangely enough, an ex-policeman. Before that, he'd served in the First World War, but he had been injured, I think, and gassed. And now that may have something to do with his state of mind, um, because later on, um, I think it was about three years after this, um, he, he was declared insane. The jury actually said, suggested that the, the judge be merciful with him. Uh, and it, he, was, he was sentenced to a, a life imprisonment. But as I say, after just three years of that, he was declared insane and was, was uh, sent to Broadmoor. I think the fact that, that the whole of the community did stop to, to pay their respects. Um, I think the, the, the gravestone, the markings on the gravestone, is, from what I understand, is a tribute from, from the rest of his teammates as well. During Rob's interview, we discovered that Tommy was buried at St John the Evangelist Church in Perry Bar, just a five minute drive from Villa Park. We knew that we had to pay a visit to Tommy's gravesite to take some time to reflect on this tragic loss of life. I think it's a story that's definitely definitely worth retelling because these are slices of history that, that, that should be preserved, really. It's another major story in, in a kind of, I suppose, rich tapestry of, of, of this football club's history, really. I think modern day football fans and modern day Villa fans shouldn't forget the, the history of this club. And that's, that's another rather bizarre, um, rather sad, but, but very interesting chapter of it. it. The tragedy of it is that such a player of great potential, somebody who'd established himself, he never actually scored a goal for Villa, but he played 77 games at the time of, of the murder. I think what a, what a sad situation when you think what, it, what could have happened. I described it as arguably the most tragic uh, incident in the club's history. I think maybe I should have left out the word arguably, I think it probably is. A promising young footballer coming into his prime for one of England's biggest football clubs was shot down due to reasons we just can't ever confirm. Was it just an irritated neighbour? Was there some jealousy from Mr Stagg? Did the fact it was Armistice Day, just five years after the end of the Great War, have an impact on Mr Stagg's mindset? All we do know is that the murder of Tommy Ball is a truly unique story in a long line of Aston Villa history. This should never be forgotten.